What's going on fam? Welcome back to After Hours. Make sure you guys check out my other channel where I post weekly of everything that I'm doing on a daily basis, the Anton Daniels channel. And then make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell because I upload videos at least three times a week on this channel. But now that we got all the housekeeping out of the way, let's get to the meat and potatoes. One of the things that I was thinking about because I was researching articles and you know looking at the financial news and things like that, and one of the stories that came up was the idea that Kobe Bryant was looking to leave Nike and start his own shoe company called the Mamba or the Mamba brand or something like that. But before we even get into that, I just kind of want to revisit and talk about Kobe Bryant in general and the fact that it's almost a one year anniversary of his passing. And that's just absolutely insane to me because I was going back and I was doing my recap considering that, you know, we about to go into the new year. We literally in the, the very last week of December 2020 and we about to go into a whole new year. And so I was doing a recap video of everything that happened on the Anton Daniels channel as far as my documentation of the whole year and how phenomenal my year was. And then obviously you're going to have different things that go on throughout the year even if your year was phenomenal you're going to have certain things that you remember about it that takes you back to where you were at that time that you found out that certain things happened and one of the things that really stick out in my mind is i know i was at the mall specifically over in michigan it's 12 oaks mall and i was out there shopping with my family and my homeboy hit me up and he was like anton tell me it ain't true that Kobe Bryant died. Now he's like, you know, I'm seeing it happen on Twitter and Instagram or whatever. And I'm like, man, stop saying that. Cause you know, people just troll and people make up stuff all the time. And they say stuff happen pretty regularly. And then he's like, nah, but I'm hearing it from some pretty credible sources. So of course I had to go in and I had to look at it and research it for myself. And it was absolutely true. So I ran home after I got home from the mall and I, just cut my camera on and I just went straight through on my thoughts about it after learning that his daughter, you know, went through that situation. And then I had to put myself in the mindset of, man, if anything ever happened to my daughter and so on and so forth. But yeah, man, just remembering, you know, where you were at that time and how it affected things. And I still personally can't even fathom or think about the idea that you know, it's not like I ever met him or anything, but just to think about this dude was truly moving into the best space of his life regarding, you know, becoming a father and transitioning away from basketball and becoming a businessman and really being impactful and his mindset and, and how he approached life and, you know, just being a mentor and a, and a role model and embracing life after basketball. It just seems surreal that he's not here today. So I just wanted to start this episode off by acknowledging and saying rest in peace, Kobe, one year after um, approaching the one year anniversary of that fateful accident that happened. Um, I hope his family is doing well and, and chances are they'll probably never see this, but it, it doesn't change the dynamic of me having well wishes and a great regard for him as far as him, his impact on how I view basketball, how I viewed him being a girl dad all those things. So I just want to say that. And then we can start talking about this whole Mamba fiasco as far as, you know, a business partner. I was reading an article on Yahoo News. I think it was finance.yahoo.com. But I was reading this uh, article on, on Yahoo about um, there was a prototype in a business meeting that was transpiring as far as Kobe's perspective towards how he felt like uh, Nike was marketing and selling his shoes. And that there was a report that was saying that he was incredibly disappointed. And then when they reached out to Nike, Nike didn't necessarily have any comment. I mean, what can you comment? Nike is making a ton of money off the Kobe shoe right now. But, you know, Nike had no comment. And there was a, I think this guy that was talking about this shoe specifically, he is a founder of the Virgin Hyperloop that's being implemented Um across California and being tested. Obviously, Elon Musk popularized the whole Hyperloop concept as far as a travel um, opportunity for people to get to and from at a, an incredible pace. But 
he's one of the co-founders of that uh, system that's being implemented and tested and trying to put being put in production as an alternative method of transportation. And he was saying that he had a meeting set up on the calendar and he had um, witnesses that said he had a meeting with Kobe Bryant coming up to talk about Kobe then getting out of his contract with Nike and starting this Mamba shoe. And I looked at the prototype and it had like some <laughs> some scales on it, I guess, to speak on the whole snake Mamba mentality and everything like that. And it looked like a climbing shoe. It looked like a hiking boot or a climbing shoe or something like that. It looked less like a basketball shoe. But obviously it was just, you know, I'm looking at people on Twitter getting all hyped up about it and you know, saying their opinion and all of that as it relates to basketball. But again, it was a prototype. And I believe that Kobe Bryant was one of the few people that would transition and take the opportunity to possibly entertain and that he was popular enough to branch out on his own and be one of the rare people such as Kanye to create a line of shoes that could pop possibly based off its design if it was successful and that they iterated it to be, you know, something that people would really want, especially in the basketball community, especially how well regarded Kobe was. But I think he was one of the rare people that could transform the sneaker industry and being a player in addition to Nike and Kanye West at a, to a lesser extent, the Yeezy brand. And I'm not saying to the lesser extent, I'm not taking that lightly because Yeezy, hey, I'm a Yeezy fan. I love Yeezys. I, I'm Right now, I'm stripes over checks, but entirely different conversation. But let's talk about the design of the shoe. The shoe did look a little weird. I know that um, in what I was reading, they were saying that there was tracking information and different things within the shoe, the prototype or the design that they were discussing that gave you additional information as it relates to your ability to train and impact and how you run or whatever like that. But it did look quite futuristic and I'm not even discounting the shoe itself because even that prototypical design that they were putting out or that he put out on Twitter, because if anybody proved it, Kanye proved that you have to be unconventional and you got to step outside of your comfort zone in order to be successful. And that shoe line and that shoe brand has been wildly successful. And I think that it could be something there. It probably would have been something great. But we'll never know. And again, I just want to acknowledge the greatness of Kobe. I want to say rest in peace. And to everybody that looked up to him and his legacy and even his daughter and his family, you know, I hope that you guys are comforted in this time. Kobe was certainly one of my favorite players to watch. Not necessarily in my top players of all time, but definitely one of my favorite people to watch. And I, the thing that I got from him was that he was a girl dad and that he had this mentality towards success and training and putting every single thing that you have into whatever it is that you're doing. So again, rest in peace, Kobe. We love you and I uh, hope his family is doing well.